Adrian Grunewald again, welcome to Hash Global Leadership Conversation 1 for our global leadership platform. And it's a conversation about how we turn around the global leadership crisis. We really have a big crisis. We all know that. There are pockets of excellence, but we're trying to find out from experts ranging from New York to London to Australia to Africa, all over the world. We're asking two specific questions for our first conversation. In due course, we will have conversation two and three. We'll see where this leads to, but we've got to get the globe conversing about this leadership crisis. And of course, it all ends up on the global leadership platform. Just go to thinklead.app and you can find out more about this platform. I've got with me Tony DeVale. How do I say your surname, Tony? Tony DeVale is fine. DeVale is good. Are you sure? Or is it DeVale? Yeah. I'm myself of us in Ulefi, but I'm an Engelsman. <laughs> Tony DeVale um, from Life Masters. Very experienced. Been working in this industry for decades, in fact. And and certainly with leaders, strategy, uh, leadership development, and, and confidently, I believe, would have a strong view on our two specific questions. So, Tony Davel, welcome. Good to have you with us. Good morning, Adrian. Thank you very much. It's great for this opportunity to, to connect with you again and be part of, of you know, growing. And you're going to ask me the question, the most important quality, and it's, for me, it's consciousness. It's okay. growing the absolute core consciousness of people, teams, leadership, and culture. So, thank you. Okay, so yeah, what is the most important leadership attribute or quality that we need to develop or awaken in leaders to turn around this global leadership crisis? And you say develop consciousness. Tell us more about that. I've done a lot of work in my life ranging from business tech stuff. So I'm a, my background is I'm tech, COBOL, RPG, IBM, mainframe. So that's where my headspace is. And then I've done a lot of work with Mankind Project. We do healing work for men. And in my journey of my own development, I've gone through all of the different modalities of NLP, hypnotherapy, timeline therapy, everything to do with better head, better heart, better soul. And what really stood out for me is in looking at what's happening in the world and all, all of my research in companies, I think companies are missing the soul. And I, I jokingly call it corporate soul surgery. Because the only focus that I see when I do my, my high performance research is on the upper echelon, it's money, 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 money. And there's no care or concern for the human component of the process. And so I call that greedership. Because the decisions that are made, we're losing money, cut stuff. There's no, there's no heart in the process. Mm. And so as you're coming down the line, there's more HR, more care, more compassion, more kindness. But at this highest level, the drive and the push and the dragon that they are feeding is the money dragon. Are you meeting targets and are you doing your quarterlies if you're a public company? And so I think it's, it's a slippery slope because these guys climb into a, into a high-speed machine. Um, it's expensive. They're earning big money. Now some guys are earning millions a month in, in our country and globally. And there's this pressure to push, push, push. And you know, they say that neurons that fire together, wire together. So left brain numbers people, that's their focus, that's their forte, and that's what they focus on. And it's very hard to find an equal balance of head and heart. Hmm. From my mankind work, we make the joke that the longest journey a man will take is from here to here. <laughs> Not really to get into that, that caring, kindness, compassionate, vulnerable space. And I see the world changing. It, need, it needs to change because we've tightened this machine so hard. Mm. You know, I like speed and power. And you see these 3,000 horsepower machines when the guys flat out and they, I mean, they push them to the limit. And I think we've done that in business and are doing it in business. Stress levels are excessive. Illness is, you know, is at incredible levels. Absenteeism, presenteeism. Mm. There's just such a drive, more, 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 with less and less and less. Mm. We're talking about work-life balance because people, you know, this this beast 
wherever we are and we're on, we're, we're no longer off. You're in a lovely space. You're in a calm, peace. I'm a bit more of mayhem out here. But on the field, I, I think the pedal's to the metal still. And when I do the research and I do the interviews and I hear back from the people, some people working 24 hours a day, three days in a row, you know, like, and it's on a monthly basis. They don't see their children for a week. Mm. And I'm thinking, for what? For money? For a cold lover? Just for a piece of paper? And, and I'm thinking one of my, my clients, they're, they're a gambling company. And uh, I have certain value issues around gambling and what does that, that does for humanity. But there's still 3,000 people in the machine. And the leader's a really nice guy. And it's a family-owned organization. But the pedal's to the metal. The turbo's running at full boost. People are under extreme duress. And so for me, for the leader to just ease back and understand, i got 3,000 souls that I'm accountable for here. You can't just ride over them flatly. And so that consciousness allows you to then do a lot more important things. But if you know, I think it's um, David Hawkins, Power Versus Force, in his book, he's got a graduated scale of consciousness from shame, blame, hurt, all the way up to freedom, love, abundance, and joy. Mm. And that's my mission and my goal is to take people through the step process out of the, and that's like an alchemist, they take lead and they turn into gold. So take blame, pain, shame, hurt, frustration, twitchy, bitchy, and turn to love, appreciation, gratitude, and, and joy and peace. Uh, at the end of the day, business for me, money's oxygen. It's not the reason for the business. But that's a shift in brain set that many guys struggle with. Tony, well, you, I can see you just flowing over with, with so much experience and knowledge and research. So, I mean, greedership in, in, instead of leadership, uh, yeah, very important. That's why we had this financial crumble in 2007, eight, and, and, it, and we're still feeling it today. The world has never been the same. We all know it was because of greed. Um, obviously, you have your exceptions again at the top, but in general, I'm, I'm hearing what you're saying. So you're saying better consciousness is the top quality that leaders need to develop in order for us to turn this around. So how do I develop that's, that? That's the, cat, that's the catalyst. Yeah that will allow you to do everything else. Yeah. You know, people are hired for their IQ. They're fired for their lack of EQ. So you, you might be an expert here technically and financially and commercially. But if, you know, you're hurting cats, if, if you don't have the heart to have some sense of care, compassion and consideration for the people that are doing the work, that are in the machine, the grinders. And I've seen it. I've, I've done, I worked with a, a, an accounting firm. And in the pre-event um, interviews and preparation, the lady that engaged me, she said to me, you can't use that word. And I said, sorry, I thought I'd maybe slipped in that slip of the tongue and I swore. I said, which word? She said, you can't use the word love. Mm. I said, sorry? She said, if you use the word love, you'll lose the credibility and respect of all of my directors. These are senior chairmen, senior partners of a very large local accounting firm. And I thought, wow, is that where they live? And then I interviewed staff and I heard what it, it was a slave, you know, hot, hot kitchen slave place. Mm. And I started my session. I said, good morning. I'm probably in front of the most intelligent group I've been in front of for a very long time on an EQ basis. I said, but on an, an, on an IQ basis, but on an EQ basis, I think you guys are at zero. And it was like, <gasps> at the very end, the chairman came and said, you know what? He said, you're right. We've lost our soul because all we have is a number. And so I have one level further than greeter. It's a bleeder where they're happy to harm their people they're mentally, emotionally, financially. Um, and there are a few of them I've been in. They throw stuff, they st stuff cry each day. It's, it's slave okay. care. So, so Tony, um, just give us a, a point or two on how you develop that consciousness. Hmm, therein lies the magic. I've spent my life... Once I found David Hawkins' framework, I was fascinated with this thing. And I thought, why am I really on the planet? What is my soul's mission? And part of my mankind work, you go across the river, into the mountains, and you find your destiny. And here's mine. As a man amongst men, it was a men's workshop, I co-create a world of more, more integrity, freedom, love, abundance, meaning, peace, and joy. 
That's what I think is missing in the world in our business. That's the, the, the reason we're on the planet is to see what consciousness will do given free will. Mm. And so in some of my other research, they talk about when you have a near-death experience. And my, my brother-in-law was a chief risk director for an accounting firm. And he had a stroke. And he died and we got him back. And he said, all that stuff, that woo-woo stuff you're talking about, he said, it's true. That's so he went down the tunnel. He met his whoever, his avatar, Jesus, or his angels, whatever they were. Question number one, how much love did you bring whilst you were on this game called love? Question two, how much wisdom did you gain while you were dancing? And question three, are you ready to receive back, not as a punishment, but as an awakening, a consciousness builder, the kind of stuff you perpetrated on others. And that for me became my fundamental approach to, am I bringing love? Am I growing in wisdom and learning? And am I treading lightly on the rest of the people around me? Because many of us are in such high speed, good intention of, of splashing and damaging. And so that's been my life's work is how do we climb this consciousness ladder? And so you got to, you got to get into the soft, mushy stuff. It's, yeah. it's, it's your it's emotions it's your identity of of who you think and see see that you are it's your value system it's how you show up in the world it's how you your self worth self esteem self confidence it's the baggage that you have from your upbringing um, and so it's 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 deep stuff it's mushy soul soul surgery stuff but I don't think you can climb out of the swamp without without having to go through some of this stuff uh it's, you might have a, what's this like this damascus experience but you, sometimes people get hit on the head or they have a near-death experience and they come back and their life is completely different but if we're going to climb up step by step you're going to come up through the the blame the shame the pain the hurt the, the frustration the twitchy the bitchy and get to kind of this middle part because everything underneath is destroying consuming depreciating mm. and everything above the line is appreciating and growing. So the scale that they created is 10 to the log, so 10 to the power of. So 10 to the power of two is 100, yeah. 10 to the power of three is 1,000, 10 to the power of six is a million, 10 to the power of 1,000 is the highest vibration your body and consciousness can hold. But 85% of the planet is under this 10 to the 200 in the, the destructive, consuming, withdrawing, not enough, me, me, mine, greed. And so, an average person will move five to 10 points up the scale in a lifetime. So growing consciousness is not a fast, accelerated process. It's a, a steady step process. My mission and my experience and my focus of my life is to move people 100 points in a workshop. That's my power. Wow. Is I take, I create a context, a safe container context. I have um, processes and activities and we take people through an, an experiential action learning process. We give you tools to become conscious of the stuff that you carry. Um, I'm very manipulative with love. We actually give people baggage in the process. I have the, probably the most profound, if I said to you, what is the core constraint and limitation that is in your consciousness that's blocking you from your fullest potential? It's like, could you tell me? Mm. It's not, not easy. Now imagine a room of 20 people you're trying to do this with. So I have a, a profound process where we take them through and they then get to write down what they think it's based on empathy and projection. And then they go through and they say, this guy's feeling angry or twitchy or bitchy or sad or he's free. So we have a range of emotion in that process from absolute hell, hurt, harm to freedom flying. And then we flip the game over and we say, what happens if, what you've written on this piece of paper is in fact what you are hiding behind your mask. It's the emotional static and baggage that you're hiding behind your mask. And it becomes what I call a BFO, a blinding flash of obviousness, like, ha, huh, that's what's stopping me from being the fullest and best that I can be. Mm. And so we give them a bag with blocks of wood that says anger, um, betrayal, loss, hurt, frustration, not good enough, cut fall, all of the, the, the emotional stuff that we have, the energetic stuff, oh. and they carry that. They go to the loo, they eat with it, because they then realize this stuff is affecting my life in every way and form. 
and then we give them the tools to start to unhook and set themselves free. Sounds and fair. that's the way to build the because if, if you've got this high speed Ferrari, but you've got 10,000 10, pounds of baggage on it, you can never perform fully. Mm. So, in the simplest, it's unhooking your baggage, unhooking your static, and re engineering how you see your, who are you. you know, are you a, a human being or you're a being of light? Do you, do you have a soul that brings love? Who are you? Mm. Um, well, I, I, I feel your energy and then what I hear you say is there's no shortcut. It is maybe one's most important life mission is to discover who you are, is to, to in fact become more conscious. Um, and it sounds like you have a fascinating process. I hope a lot of people link up with you and, and, and I'm sure you, you, you help them uncover those limiting beliefs and intruder influences in their lives. And then they discover their true self and they can move forward accordingly. So we'll have many more conversations with you. This one is around these two questions. It feels like we can have many more conversations. I'm excited to bring you into Hash Global Leadership Conversation 2 in due course, but this is number one. We keep them short as we can so that people actually listen to them. You know, we don't, we want yes. them to listen and we want them to engage. So thank you for your time. Um, Tony DeVale from Life Masters. Uh, if I may ask you one thing, you asked the how. Yeah. You have to take your people through a consciously constructive process where the intention is on a daily basis to grow them from the inside out skill set and mindset mm. give them the emotional intelligence the awareness and the choice but it's a it's a constant baby step process mm. and if people want to connect with me i've got lots of info i'm glad will gladly give to to raise humanity's consciousness yeah no i can I sense your energy i'm sure everyone else will too and we're very excited to have you as part of this global conversation thank you for thank putting you. your voice out there i think it's a it's a powerful yeah. voice and we look forward to taking it further thank you tony Bless you. Thank you very much. Yes.